let me get to this part of the show that I call silly questions. So uh, I'm going to ask you five questions. Both of you can take a, a shot answering. There's no right or wrong answers. This is just to get us to know you a little bit, okay? All right. Question one. You're flipping channels on TV or your streamer, whichever's modern. Yes. What's the one movie that if you if you click on it, you're not coming off of it? You, no matter where it is, you got to sit and watch it till the end. Let's start out with Anthony. Oh, Rocky. Hands down, Rocky. Rocky. Yes. Can't uh, move Rocky. away from Rocky. Rocky, one, two, three, four, <laughs> six, or seven. Not five. There you go. <laughs> Anyone but five. No, no Tommy Gunn for me. I mean, there's there's a there's a lot of movies like Shawshank Redemption is one that yeah, I will, right. I will turn off. The Godfather Two is one that I will. I mean, there's a lot, but to me, my my guilty pleasure is Rocky. There's something about that song when he starts working out, just like oh man, you got to be going. Cool, Rocky, Eddie, how yeah. about you? You know, uh, he already mentioned a few of them already. I mean, anytime Godfather One, Godfather Two is on, I, I'm watching it, and the primary reason is because I catch something new almost every time I watch it, yeah. and it's yeah. a very complex movie. Um, something that I enjoy. Uh, I, I really enjoy um, another movie that I really liked is uh, uh, Shawshank Redemption. It's one of my mm-hmm. top five of all time. Um, I also enjoy, and not that I enjoy it, I think it's a very well written movie. Was uh, Schindler's List? I, I watched that. It's kind of you know morbid a little bit just because of the the the, the, the show right. that you know what it was depicting, but it's just a well made movie. Um, so uh, you know if that comes on, it, you don't see it on that often, but if that comes on, I'll watch it. So yeah, there's a, a bunch of like a lot of the classics, man. I mean, honestly, uh, I, I most of these sh- movies that I just talked about, if they're on Goodfellas, is another one. I like the mafia <laughs> yeah, right, movies, right? right? Yeah, yeah, Goodfellas yeah. is another one I watch. Maybe the first half of it because that's the best part. The second half is kind of eh, but yeah, those are the movies. The Departed, right. all these movies, yeah. Cool, man, excellent. All right, you're playing a game of horse. You have the opportunity to play a game of horse with one NBA player, dead or alive. Cool. Who are you Eddie, playing you horse with? Eddie, you start out first. Uh, that, that 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 I could you know just to interact and or try and beat him. <laughs> it's a game of horse, man. Take it any way you want. Man, you know, I, you know, I, I I gotta go. I gotta go with. Uh, I gotta go with Steph Curry, man. Honestly, because I mean, he's incredible at how he shot. Yeah, I, I could probably learn some things from him on how he shoots, mm-hmm. right? So, and, and he's a good guy, you know, from what I've heard from people who have met him. Or seen him. I know Tuan has seen him from afar. Yeah. Uh, I have another buddy of mine who's actually in our fantasy football league that actually played in the same uh, golf uh, club or the same golf uh, course with him, and the and Steph was in the in the in, in the group ahead of him, and they actually met right after the round. And he said he was a very down to earth, easy going guy. So I would say Steph Curry. Steph Curry for you, Anthony. Yep. Man, I'm, I've been as he's talking, I'm thinking, I'm going through <laughs> names in my head, and I'm, you know. I'd probably go with Chris Mullen. Chris mm. Mullen. Yeah. Yeah. I, he fascinates me in, in a lot of ways, you know, uh, just a, a quick little preview, you know, he was an alcoholic when he first joined the yep. league and, and a lot of that was due to his parents passing and him being on the left coast used to being in New York and the way he overcame everything, the way that he became an all-star and the fact that, I mean, I don't mean, I don't want to set this down like an insult, but he's so good yet like, athletically so limited. You know, and, and, and so and so I just I'm fascinated by him and I would just I would I would want to talk to him more about the way he views life as opposed to his basketball skills. So he's probably the guy that I would pick because he's a guy that I grew up watching and and I, I think highly of in terms of what I know through the TV. Right. I don't know him as a person. Right. You know, but but in terms of what I've seen and, and what I've read, I, you know, he's he's one I'd like to have a conversation with. All right. Sometime catch me off camera. I'll tell you my Chris Mullen story from here in New York. Uh, okay. All right. All it's right. very quick, but it's not nothing for the air, but I'll, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, third silly question. Uh, you guys are alone on a desert island. You get to bring one artist's music collection with you. Oh, well, I got it. For the rest of the time, Okay. I think we started with Eddie last time, so we'll go to Anthony now. Anthony, who's the, who's that artist you're bringing with you to the Desert Island? And that, that can be a collective, right? Like a band or an individual? Anything, just, yeah. Okay. Artist, anything you want. Man, so many to pick from, but I got to stay true. Tribe Called Quest. Tribe Called Quest. That's who I'm going to go with because uh, right. I love almost everything they put out. And so that's going to be vast and a lot of variation there. So that's who I would go with, Tribe Called Quest. There you go, Tribe Called Quest. Eddie. Um, 
I'm going to go with a group that, in my opinion, is overlooked as one of the best bands of all time. Because anytime you hear the best bands of all time, you're always hearing about rock, right? Mm. You know, Led Zeppelin, Rolling Stones, right? Uh, you know, name them, uh, the, the Who, all these other classic rock bands, right? You always hear that's, you know, when you hear that band, that's what you gravitate to. That's what you hear. So to me, it's Earth, Wind & Fire. So I think Earth, Earth Wind, Wind & Fire is one of the best bands of all time. And, and they're, 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 I, that's who I would pick. Yep, yeah, they got that funk, call. bro. Uh, you can't deny that. Yep. Okay. How about you, John? What's your? Well, I'm curious on this one. You're What's curious? your? Uh, yeah. Well, like, I, I, at heart, I'm a Ramones guy. Uh, okay. From when I grew up, it's my era. It's it's New York music. I'm a born and bred New Yorker. You can't get it out of me. So it was definitely the Ramones. Um, they also have like a 20 year catalog I could choose from. Yeah. Uh, but I will say one thing. If there was one band that comes very close for me, very, very close, it would be Rancid, who's a California band, huh. Yes, uh, you know, that came out of the punk revival in the in the yeah. mid-90s. But, but I, if you put a gun to my head, I would say the Ramones. Yeah, I'm a okay. punk rock yeah. guy, uh, aging punk rocker, which is a sad sight. But yeah, that's, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, fourth question. And this one might you might have to put your thinking caps. If you guys could either change any rule or add a new one to make the NBA a better game, oh. what would it be? So I think this one goes to Eddie first because we went last time Anthony answered first. I think because the three-pointer is already kind of obsolete, in my opinion, because everybody can do it. You already see these three on three tournaments have like five point shots and four point shots. I would say that there is, if you can make a shot in a designated area that is farther than three and make it like, you know, a five point shot, that'd be cool. It's just different. But I know a lot of the traditionists wouldn't like it just because it's not traditional basketball. I think it'd be interesting. I mean, you're going to make it's a, it, it starts kind of making the brand of basketball kind of what you see worse, right? But <laughs> right. it just makes the game interesting. So that's more that's exciting. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you would add the multiple. You would add. I just had one more extra longer shot in. Right for more it. points. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Anthony, oh, what's, what's right. your improvement to the NBA? So this is one that is going to have a lot of ramifications, and we can talk about those ramifications. It's conversations I've actually had with my brother. Uh, so one of the things that bothers me about the NBA today is how the superstars move from team to team, um, and so one of the one of the things that I would put in is I would keep the salary cap, but what I would do is I would change the cap to a lower number, but any player that a team drafts does not count against the cap. So no matter who you have, as long as you stay on that team, it doesn't count against the cap. If you So you get maybe like instead of $120 million, maybe you get like a $50 million cap so you can bring someone over. But once that person leaves their team, they're a cap casualty no matter where they go, as opposed to staying on the team that they're at. Where, you know, and you can figure out the money. Obviously, I don't want to make it where one player can make 200 million a year and another can make 30 million. But to me, that's what I would do. I would, I would set it up so that teams that players that get drafted for a team are highly incentivized to stay on that team. Interesting. Yeah. That I haven't heard that one before, but just off the top of my head, I could see where you need to put a lot of thought into that. Cause like yes. you said, there's, a, there's a lot of number crunching. You have to see what the trends would be and whether you, the union would go for it because I could see where the union would be like, nah, man, we like this moving around because it causes bidding for players. But at the same time, it lets you keep superstars with no ramifications other than the salary if you've drafted them. So theoretically, I could see where someone drafts like a Wimbayama and they're like, hey, you're not leaving. Or Giannis in Milwaukee, yeah. you're not leaving because we're the ones who can pay you the most right. and we could do it forever. Like so, you could reach that two hundred million a year theoretically, if if that's the value you have to your organization, right? That's an interesting one. That's a good one. I like that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, just uh, just for a minute, visualize at least for me, visualize if LeBron never left Cleveland. Yeah, like he was. Oh, I think I think he would be better liked. I think he would be. People would think of him more highly than they do well, already. Certainly, well, certainly the people in Cleveland would like him a lot. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. imagine him and Kyrie, right? They're both Cleveland guys with Wiggins, right. right? I mean, those are guys that never got to play together, but under this rule, 
the odds are they would they would have. All right, I like that. I like that. That's a sneaky one, Twan. Yeah, I no, like I, that one. Yeah, I, he, I like that one. Yeah, he's ta- he's talked to me about it before. That's why I want. I knew you were gonna go there, man. That's why I didn't want to. <laughs> that, I knew and, this, and this is for all for all the homies out there. You're on the yeah. same. You're on the same desert island, Eddie. You've got Earth, Wind, and Fire. Anthony, mm-hmm. you've got Tribe Call Quest. Now, outside of your wives, because I don't want to get you in trouble with oh, nobody. Shit. Oh shit. <laughs> Which. Who's the who's the female you're bringing with you to spend time on that island? Oh. I told I'll you. Answer, I'll, I'll answer that one very easily, man. Your wives can't I'll, get mad at you. I took no. them off the table. Okay. So it's a known thing that one of my celebrity crushes has always been Sandra Bullock. Mm. My wife knows it. But I was not going to say her. What I was going to say is, if you ever watch, you know, the Univision or Telemundo? You'll pick on, a great, ra- on rare occasion. If if you watch that every day, you'll pick someone different, man. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna say any any any. I'll watch a week's worth of Univision or Telemundo, and I'll pick a girl every day from that freaking channel. That's who I pick. <laughs> and, and, and then you wait for uh, was it Sabato Gigante, and you get Sabato Gigante, uh, yeah. Don Francisco. Yeah. Don Francisco. And Don, with Don Francisco, and you get yes. like uh, one of those weather girls that dances around a lot. It's okay. An, oh yeah, it's it's so a no. The producers so are genius want, on those shows, man. They're genius. <laughs> so Seriously. you want one of those nice, any of them, thick, thick Latina girls? Right? Any of them, man. You just <laughs> okay. any of them. Yep. I'll let uh, it's a cheat, but I'll let you get away with that. Yeah, I see some, uh, yeah Eddie. Eddie always seems to work that system to his advantage. <laughs> I'm gonna. I haven't. So I'm gonna be honest. I haven't seen her lately. But my girl, when I was growing up, was Daisy Fuentes from Oh yeah, Daisy Fuentes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, if she looks anything like, like she looked before, you know, well, I, this that's is fantasy. This is fantasy, Tuan. So you get Daisy Fuentes oh, when yeah, she was I mean, young, the way good. you remember her. She I'm hasn't good. aged. I am for good. Pur- for purposes of this experimentation, All right. then I'm a happy her, man. You get oh. her the way you remember her, man. Yeah. Hey, Gail, Gail and uh, Patty, if you're listening, sorry. You know, we were asking this question, and it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's you a blame. fantasy thing, so sorry, right? Yeah, blame Big John for that question. I already yeah, took your husband's off the hook. Good, uh, who is it, Patty and? Gail. Yeah, Patty's Patty my wife. And... Gail is, is Twan's wife. Patty yeah. and Gail, it's not your husband's fault. Blame Big John on that one. <laughs> Better yet, blame William Del Pilar. That way none of us are on the That's hook. It. That's yeah, the good. best there one. There you go. Get them, right, guys. Blame the, the Panameño. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. I, I enjoyed this conversation. I hope you guys did as well. Yeah, and for fun. the fans out there, I can't emphasize enough. Go check out Buzzer Beaters. Go check out Buzzer Beaters. I don't care if you check out Buzzer Beaters and you don't watch this show. Go watch Buzzer Beaters because that's the show you want to go to, especially if you're a Hoops fan. But if you just want to see two guys – who have a, a lifelong history together, who have great conversations, good topics, and and it's just fun to listen to. Go check out Buzzer Beaters every Wednesday for a new podcast episode. Every Wednesday, Buzzer Beaters. Hey, everybody, this is Big John from Grumblings Media, and I just want to say thank you for watching our content. If you want to support our efforts here at Grumblings Media, just smash the subscribe button right here, totally free, or Just go ahead and consume more of our great content. Click either one of these two boxes.